Williams, did you know Kelly so? Yes, I did. How did you know Kelly? She was my daughter, my child. Now I'm going to take you to December 7th of 2018. Did you go to the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office? Yes. For what purpose? To identify my child. The LGBT movement has gained some rights, but not for trans people. When gay marriage became legal that year, I think it was 2015, 2016, uh, the year, that year and two or three years after that were one of the highest rates of trans, trans people, specifically trans women of color being murdered in the United States at the highest rates possible. Come this way. This is another bathroom. For a long time, there was when one of us was murdered, uh, nothing happened. No one did anything. Uh, it was our fault. We, we did something wrong. There's no justice that usually happens. These are some of the people that we have lost throughout the years. And so we do a for, forever in our hearts. Kelly is not yet up here, um, but you'll see some of the girls. Many of these are trans women who were murdered. So we put them up here. The trans community, the LGBT community, specifically of color, have always been resistant to systems, especially legal systems, because they haven't been really nice to us. And so when Fair Michigan first started, they were really smart in connecting with a trans woman of color, Jalissa. A lot of people don't know my background or story, but I didn't have a horrific childhood um, being trans. Um, I actually had really good parents. I was brought up in a good household, had an education, have college um, a degree. I speak three languages. My name is Jalisa Abad. I am the Director of Advocacy for uh, Trans Individuals at Fair Michigan. I had relocated here from Florida. I started trying to find employment here. It just did not happen. The assumption and the negative social stigma that came with living in this area was that you were automatically a sex worker. Around that same time, I lost two trans uh, sisters that were murdered in this area. I reached out to Dana Nessel. <laughs> called her and asked her if she had two minutes, uh, basically explained to her my story, what it is that trans women have to go through. And I just honestly pleaded my case and told her the truth. I just need someone to believe in me and give me an opportunity, and I'd be willing to work just as hard as anybody else. The girl stand here on Longwood. The next street over is where one of the um, trans girls was shot. In the beginning, I would stand out here with the girls that I would consider my friends and that I knew, and would write down license plate numbers, which is how I started advocating, just because so many girls, either they were getting robbed or assaulted and murdered. So I wanted to at least have a starting point When the girls would get assaulted or beat up, they would be criminalized for prostitution, but not address the fact that they were just robbed or beat up or raped. Or again, they would be misgendered and not treated with respect to where they're not gonna go to the police station and report. So a lot of the trans women that get beat up, assaulted, have been raped and robbed, have came and knocked on my, this door here and all the other doors of the apartments that I've had. And on every instance that I call Jamie. The 
This project got started because back in 2014 and 15, we had an unprecedented number of trans women of color who were killed in the city, and the cases weren't being closed. They have stopped going to the police because they have learned that when they call, no one is going to come, and if they do come, they're not going to take it seriously or respect them. We broke trust with them. We can't just sit here and wait for them to report. It is up to our community to keep going back to that community to make sure that they know this system can, can work for them. We're lucky that we had Jalisa, somebody who could kind of vouch for us. I myself as the victim advocate will make sure that I'm there with you the whole time in court, um, talking to you, walking you through it. Raise your right hand. Stage four name. Tavares Bates. What is your name that you use every day? Kyra. Your legal name is Tavares? Yes. You're a transgender woman? Yes. Your family and friends call you Kyra? Yes. Because of the stigmatization associated with being trans, these men also see these women as less than human. And they, because of the stigmatization, also hate themselves for their preference. Obviously, we start with encouraging these victims and these witnesses to work with us to prosecute those that hurt them. Uh, in the bigger picture, we're talking about changing how people see trans people. Um, we have to remove the stigmatization. If a community as a whole sees police and people in authority not respecting you and not treating you with dignity, what is going to make the community feel like they should treat you any better? Ms. Butts, how do you know Albert Weathers? We've had prior engagements in the past. When you were working with Kelly, did you and Kelly ever encounter Mr. Weathers together? She didn't get in the car, but yes, we, he was rode past and we saw him and had discussions about him. Kelly was probably one of the most funniest people that you would ever meet. She was hilarious. We spent a lot of times having fun and laughing. She believed in Sticking up for the girls, she believed in the rights of trans women of color. That's my little piece about transgender women is just awareness and, you know, once again, we're not asking for your, you know, we're not looking for to be ostracized. When, when, when she passed away, the thought of that not being in the community anymore because it's rough to be in this community without having those type of spirits or presence. When she left, it felt like there was a piece of a lot of us that were taken. Was there a certain um, thing that Mr. Weathers would do whenever you had dates that yes. caused you to stop taking dates? His attitude is like very like aggressive and kind of kind of intimidating. Like if you're one of those easily intimidated people, and I just don't like altercation. He's no. too aggressive for me. I am not sure that you would have seen Kyra on the stand without Fair Michigan. Specifically because both Jamie and Jalissa were the people that supported Kyra in this. Kyra did not want to get on the stand in the first place, let me say that. It really was Jalisa that really empowered Kyra to do it. And then I think because they stepped up and the community stepped up, that's what made Kyra do that. But without Fair Michigan, you would not have seen Kyra on that stand. I want my community always to be there and be present. Like, I want people to know, like, we are here and we're gonna rally together and this isn't okay and acceptable anymore. This year is different because this year, the community is seeing that the system is working for them and now they are becoming more vocal and supporting each other when they come forward. So there's safety in numbers, right? So if you heard a trans woman of color now, they know the police are coming, the prosecutor is coming, and these defendants are gonna know now that the community is coming. Have 
this phobia of one day me waking up and all this not being real, like it being a dream, because sometimes it's really surreal to me how far I've come. As much as I'm overwhelmed and tired, I, I cannot say no. If my phone rings, I'm helping you.